Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Real Late Hot 97. My name is Peter Rosenberg, and I'm very, very happy now because as if you listen every week, you hear that I'm pretty much playing some UK hip-hop every week. So why not talk to, I mean, arguably as important a player in the UK hip-hop scene as there ever was. Some would say number one, and many would say that. Uh, Dizzy Rascal's in the building. What's going on, boss? It's How, an honor to be up here, man. It's an honor to have you here, man. I'm just looking at the plaques up there. Where I think some wow. some great ones, some random ones. My guy's got nine million. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. Who uh, Usher? Usher did. Yeah, Usher did nine. Man. What's what's your record? How many million? I've got a few million. My, my um the album after my sorry the album before my uh the one just that just came out. It didn't just come out. It came out like three years ago. Yeah, I think yeah, it, exactly. it feels like it just came out because I need to put another one out. I'm working on it. But I went platinum on the album before this one. Uh, I've got, a f I've, I've, overall, I've sold a few million records. Well, one of the things that really surprised me was when I was um, talking to someone and I asked about your age yeah. and realized how young you are and how long you've been around. Right. So talk, talk a little bit. I we'll talk a lot about what's going on now and because yeah. I think it is a really great time for right, the UK. Right, right. But let's talk about when it all started and the scene was totally different. Okay. And you must have been quite young. So tell, tell me a little bit about your intro into the game. So I'd say I was 15. I started off as a drum and bass DJ. So I was mixing drum and bass records originally, um, making tapes and all that. Then I learned to rap and MC over drum and bass. I was influenced by obviously American hip hop, but I felt like the the um, drum and bass MCs sounded like where I was from. So I, I rapped like, like them, people like, I guess like at the time Wiley, Skibbity, DWE, Riddles, those were my influences. And then I stopped doing, stopped DJing when Garage came through. Um, and, I stopped it, buying it, records. And uh, how would you describe Garage music to people who are American and haven't really so heard it? UK Garage is just like a, it's like kind of funky kind of two-step kind of, it originally came from America anyway. I think it came from like Chicago mm -hmm. or, or something so like that. But then when the UK spin on it, it sounded a bit more, kind of industrial sounding with the drums, I'm guessing. Um, and then, uh, so I, after the garage thing came through, I started, um, I started MCing, MCing more, I started making records as well. It's a hard, it's a blur, because it's so long ago, it's like 13, 14 and it, well, and years it all ago, sort you know of, I mean? And it's all sort of merged over time, right? Right, exactly, so those are my influences. But I, at the same time, I was in, when it came to making beats, when I started making beats, I was really heavy into grunge, heavy metal, obviously garage, Dark Soul and all that, but Three Six Mafia, that's that's what made me think that I could make beats. Because at the time I didn't know who I could get beats from, but I wanted to make beats. I started making beats in school, so I was 15. And uh, Three Six Mafia, I used to love Project Pat, Three Six Mafia. So, so that, DJ that, that, Paul. That, that, yeah, so yeah. The, the whole crunk thing, yeah, yeah them, basically yeah. there. So which now nah, to me is just trap, everyone's doing the same thing, but I was just in it, I was into it back then. And then obviously that that's when Timberland and Neptunes were, were popping as well. And then ne Neptune's had that really kind of simple production style that seemed kind of easy. So mm -hmm. if you had Music 2000 back then on the PlayStation, you could do it like that, or Cubase. Those were the early programs that I, get, I, I was using, then graduated to um, Logic and all and that. And did the 3-6 Mafia beats and the Timbaland double time stuff affect your rap style yeah, as well? Yeah, be because it was a similar tempo to UK Garage at the time. So I, I remember when... Um, Timberland, uh, what's it called? Jay Z. They had the track. Uh, Is that your chick? Mm -hmm. That's like the ultimate uh, double time. Right. Record. And that's that's when I could tell. Like, uh, at that time, that was perfect. I used to like rapping. I actually wrote a, uh, my first track. I love you. I wrote it to that beat to that song. Really? Not uh, to, to, yeah, not even the beat to the song with Jay Z still rapping on it. And then, then uh, um, the idea was it it was that and um, what's your fantasy, Ludacris? So I was th that track was heavily influenced by those and Three Six Mafia because even before that, I love you. I, I, there's a couple of tunes that I sampled Three Six Mafia tracks. I got a, tri a track called Cram and another track called Bird Them About. Like I said, this is when I was 15, and then like I said, I was MCing on the pirate radio stations at that time with a bunch of different crews. People like the Nasty Crew, um, Roll Deep Crew, Wiley and all them, Morfire Crew, which uh, Lethal Bizzle was a part of. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it just it was just a crazy time. It's basically sound system culture for anyone who wants to know more about it. I know people ask about what gram is, people say oh, it's one forty BPM, blah blah, thirty baseline. But it's basically a sound system culture. You could compare it to 
the early days of hip hop, before Cool Herc and that, because I just done some research and found out that there was people before that out in Brooklyn and Queens and all that, people like King Charles, who basically he just co uh, got bought the sound system over. He was copying King Tubby, which again, it's a parallel thing to the UK because- the, the influence from the well, island. It, right, from mm -hmm. the Jamaican culture and all the sounds. At, at the time when I was younger, I didn't understand that that's what I was doing. I just, it was just something that I grew up, it, it was in my area, so it was really accessible to me. Pirate radio stations like Rinse FM and Deja Vu that spawned a lot of the big MCs that you've that you, that you seen. And all the way today. up till now. Exactly, exactly. So Rinse they, still has a, a big, big role right. like that. So um, when did the word grime even come into play? Like when do you think it all actually merged and we fully got what is a subgenre? of rap and hip hop because I mean some people try to like act like it's completely separate which is crazy nah, talk. Nah, it's, it is it's completely amazing. a subgenre. Yeah, that's it. And it's part of the same culture. Right. When did it really come to be for you and that word started getting thrown around? That word started coming around before I'd even put a single out and it used to it used to annoy me. See like see like originally hip hop the term hip hop was a derogatory term. That's how I saw gram. Basically the gram kids we were the kids really we weren't a lot like we'd get turned away from the garage events until it got to a time where the, f the few people that would put on ev events that played our type of music, which we were producing ourselves and all that, eventually they'd have to give us a room to do our thing. And then we just became the most popping thing. So that that that's early, two, that's like 2002. And then it, became, it started spreading nationwide on the underground still though. So there's, there's people that have still got the, the, um, the tape packs from when we used to MC at place uh, at raves like um, Sidewinder, and there's a bunch of under 18s raves. And you have to understand, L London especially was really segregated at that time. So f um, north, east, south, west, it was still segregated. So this this music brought everyone together. You've got it was it, it was all issue going to other people's areas. You could get checked for that. The same here in New York originally when mm -hmm. Queens dudes went to Brooklyn. It's of the course, same thing. Of course, yeah, same thing. But the music brought us together. So the, the music squashed all that and then they did the same across the country because I didn't know nothing about Manchester. I knew about Manchester United. Right. I, said, I didn't know nothing about didn't Liverpool. Know there was a scene there though, right? right. Liverpool, nah, Manchester. I didn't really associate with black people either, which is crazy. Just like you lot don't associate England with black people. We're, we're, we're the same. Like, right, within England. Within England, yeah. In the UK, you don't associate other parts of the UK. Is right. Having, right, yeah. And not just black people. It's, it's, it's always been, it's, it's a hood thing. Basically, for I can relate it. So it started off as a real underground council estates. Council estates are our projects back home. Started the pirate radio stations were on the top of project buildings. You'd call them project buildings. And the the, the estates there are very random where they the, where they sit. Like uh, literally, um, shout out to my man Marvin Harrison. Marvin, oh, and we always hang out when I'm out there, and he would show me like he'll be like, oh, these are projects right here, and it's literally just like right on a street across the street from where there's expensive housing. He showed me project housing right across the street. Especially now, nah, where, where there's been so much gentrification and London's become such a millionaire's playground. That's what they're calling it. So that's what happened. But the sad thing is a lot of the venues that spawned a lot of this underground music, and it's not just, it's not just um, Graham. Graham, Graham is, it comes from the same family to me as drum and bass, as UK Garage, as dubstep. Like I've, I've, I've been hearing dubstep from when I was making Graham, like it was just called Sublo and things like that at the time. But a lot of the, like I said, a lot of these venues, they're not there no more. Because yeah, maybe there's there's a Starbucks now or they've, they've built luxury houses and especially after the Olympics, Olympics played a big part. In and also people who don't know, I mean, like you think New York and San Francisco are expensive, London's expensive. Crazy. I mean, it's really, it's like overwhelming. And the places that are really, like the Notting Hills and the places that are super, right. like there's not, there's not like, it's not livable really, unless you're straight up rich for a lot of places in London. Right. Most so, of many, many, many places. Exactly. In so a lot of people are not from London. A lot of the people that come out to, the, to these areas, they're from out of town. Because if you grew up in London, a lot of people have been pushed out, which, which I feel like a lot of, it's taken a lot of, Again, the culture away, but but it's but it's crazy at the same time because now Graham's got even, well it seems like it's got even bigger. You know what I mean, on a worldwide, but I think a lot of that's to do with social media too. Well, yeah, it's a good time for things to spread right. and cultures to spread around. So I guess that takes us to where we are right now. Right. How do you feel? I mean, this is a, a place where you have many new stars who have been made over the last year. I mean, I guess if you really look at it from a name standpoint, um, between Crepton Conan. And, uh, and and Skepta 
and Stormzy, yeah. you really see the emergence of you know British artists who have a who have an opportunity right. to pop, right. um, and and at least are getting recognized from a buzz standpoint in the U.S. Because previous to that, you were really the only person that had had created that at all. Right, it was such so, a long time ago. And so, how do you feel about that? Are you excited to see that the the, the growth? Yeah, because this. It's, it's, it's a scene that's been there so long and then like I said back in the day people crept and Kona and Stormzy and Scri it would have been a separated thing people would have seen themselves as different but everyone works together now everyone because everyone was still the same family obviously crept and Kona and Stormzy they're a bit younger than me and Skepta Skepta's been in it for a long time so it's just like people are just waking up to what Skepta's been doing now I, I asked Skepta when I saw him you guys don't have much of a relationship you and Skepta I don't, I don't know why, why he said that we ain't got like He's not my best friend. I don't call him up every day, but we've got more relationship than he let off in that interview. Like Skepta, Skepta I've sat in Skepta's house with his parents, and they've treated me like family. And Skepta's sat in my house. Too, yeah, I found I found there. that I found that interesting. Also, although he seems like he's Skepta's a very interesting guy. Period. Right. Like his approach to interviews and his soul. Like we had a really nice chat. Yeah. It took time for him to warm up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's yeah. an interesting. He's an interesting dude. No, wait. It's up for, to me. Like I said. We, we, we could talk candidly and differently behind the, a lot of people don't know I know a lot of people behind the scenes that we don't necessarily publicly display it, it. Right, yeah. right of course but to me look, watching that interview that could have been a pride thing you start like Skepta's oh Skepta's 34 Skepta's a, a strong proud Nigerian guy like I said we're, we're both Virgos like we've we've hung, so you saying to him, I oh, like Dizzy's like the OG. Oh right, 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 right. It can make someone be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. so, no one wants to be under anyone's wing and skept. Nah, and, and, and he's putting and, his work. Yeah, and he's putting his work, right. and there's no question it's paying off. Right, you know, but with me and me and have sat there and listened to music, and I've said, yo, we, like, I mean, we've we've got a vibe. We've hung out like more than a, I mean, more than, than a, you know from watching. Think. Right, right. Now, right. what about what about Young Stormzy? Have you gotten to kick it with him at all? Stormzy brought me out on stage uh, uh, wireless. Which was good for me because, like I said, with this whole Gram thing, like I said, it wasn't called Gram in the beginning, but I, I, I popped 12 years ago. So I've had a detachment because I've just made so much, so many different types of music. I don't tie myself to one type of music. And some people are upset with me because of that. But if you actually look at the roots of hip hop, which we're saying that this is just a subgenre of hip hop. Yeah, of course. It, it derived from dance music anyway, really. And then dance produce, hip hop producers again, like recycled in, like whatever, Armin Van Helden and all them. Then they started making club music and then that's what popped off for them around Europe. And now it's come back in the form of EDM. So people got mad at you when you made club records? Yeah, definitely when I made dance music. But then like, I'm gonna get back to my point, but I was at um, Delancey last night. I met Cool Herc. I was with Tony Touch and all that. I can't, I can't remember what DJ it was. I know DJ Hollywood is in there, but I don't know who was on. But when he when he was playing the break section, playing the the, the, the stuff that he that was coming in and out, I was like, well, that's almost pretty much just a straight up house record. So it's always been like that. But because of people people's education on hip hop, they 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 don't they they just see it as one thing because of how, how however they've been introduced to it. But the point is, with, Skep with, uh, with Stormzy and all that, is um, I've been detached. So go going on his show at Wireless, it's the first time I've got to see a next generation of youths going crazy, like they would, like they always have done, like with my generation, because I've got my generation on lock. But his age group, which is like whatever, I guess 22 and under. There was older people there too, but I'll say 22 and under, because he's like 22. Yeah, there were a lot of kids there, for sure. But I've never seen them outside of YouTube. So it's the first time I, I felt it. Same thing Crept and Conan were on too. So it's my first time actually seeing and being around the next generation, which was good for me, which I needed to see. Yeah, and that's. is it weird for you to be a young guy but be an OG in, the, in that scene? Yeah, in a way, yeah, because then sometimes I feel like, right, that... It, even even with this with this whole thing, Graham thing coming round again and knowing that I was at the beginning of it like 13 years ago, seeing that it's all blowing up in America and all that, but but everyone in England didn't get to see that I did all this and all the shows I did and all the interviews and everything because there was no social media. So they're just looking at it like I just disappeared and did pop, but they didn't get to see all the other stuff because there was no so there was no Twitter, there was right. no Instagram. I came out before YouTube. I, bro, trust me. You know what I mean? I know yeah. I was on the I was on the come up working with artists, um some of which have done well, some of which are no longer around. Mm. But 
in the pre YouTube era where like we eventually got a video on YouTube like at the end, right? But even then, YouTube didn't have the same thing. Exactly. It was like a really popping video back then had like five hundred thousand views, and you'd be like, oh my god, this video is huge. Whereas now, a, a truly popping video might have eighty million views. Right. Crazy. So it was. A, it's just a different different thing altogether. Exactly. Yeah. So then, so then it's like a lot of people at home haven't seen that this has all happened before. But again, like I said, what's what's more important for me is that the next generation have picked up on it. People like Storms in that. Without all the stuff that we like, I don't know of any under 18s events. That, that I mean, that we had all that. We had the pirate stations. There's, there's. I suppose, it, I suppose they got YouTube. There's still stations about this. And there's some websites. Yeah, there's probably more chances to get exposure now, and obviously more chance for worldwide ex exposure. But it, it's good. It's it's good that the next generation have, and then they've got their own heroes. They're supposed to. Yeah, and, 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 and now now it goes through. There are a couple of main UK um, hip-hop websites where that kind of makes more... Grime Daily, Link If you get on Grime Daily, that, people... Yeah. It's, exactly. So there are more opportunities. Did you happen to see... Um, what's the kid's name? Uh, uh, Wretch 32's Charlie Sloth bars a couple weeks ago? No, I didn't see it. Fire no, in the no. booth? No, but, fire... but, but Rich is like... He's a legend in his own right anyway. I, I, I wasn't familiar. I mean, okay. I'm still learning this ish, so... But Rich Rich Thirty Two went and did Fire in the Booth with Charlie Slaw. That bro, right, right. murder, he murder, in. blood but, clotting. But he's always been a lyricist, though. Yeah, I, I was. That's that's yeah. the thing. If you hadn't been, if you hadn't seen it all, right, I, like I was, I was like, holy smokes. There's a lot, and there's a lot of other. Like it seems like continuously, um, Chip is making some great music. Um, Section Boys. It just seems like one thing after another. There continues to be, which is really when you get to a situation in which a city has an opportunity to truly be on the scene because you know if we don't know where this story is going to go and whether right. London becomes a market in hip hop just like New York was Atlanta Los Angeles uh, New Orleans you know what if i'm honest we're behind like we're behind as far as the world like having our having our can I swear, can I, having our shit together and popping at such a big because when you go to France, back in the day when I was going to France and Germany and all this bit, they, they, they've had all this. Like France, what they've got is their own language though, which I mean helps them to separate. So so back in the day, if you wanted to go France and be big, you better hook up with some, it don't matter who you are. You, you, you could be Nas, Busta Rams, you better do something with a French artist. Few people manage to pop outside of trying to work But that makes French. perfect sense. That That's where the language barrier is in a weird way is an advantage. Right. Because with you guys speaking English, even though it's very different, slang's different, culture's different, right. it still gives people the option to be like, well, I can listen to this or I can just listen to American hip hop and still understand it. Right. Whereas in French music, you're right. Like if they, they might listen to American hip hop, but they might just specifically also be like, oh no, no, but I want to hear French. I want to understand right. everything. And some of it will be exactly the same. I've walked into a club in France and just heard, it's just T-Pain in French. But it's, yeah, 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 whatever they say, like, and they're just bubbling. It's the same beat. It's the same thing. But people, it's able to resonate more because it's French. Right. And you've got, and you've got again, all those uh, French African colonies, which that's a lot, a lot in France. Of course. You know I mean? Who came before you in the, in the UK hip hop scene? Who else was very important in the, uh, I mean, I've heard random stuff. I've, I've, I've heard eighties and nineties, uh, UK hip hop. None of it which popped to the point that the U S knew about it, but was there anything, were there any artists coming up for you in the eighties and nineties, um, that really influenced you from the UK? Or was it all American influence? No, nah, it was again, like I said, it was the drum and bass. It was all, MCs. but was there any, any, oh, but all drum and bass MCs that you named, there weren't any pure rappers, if you will, who were over traditional rap beats. You know what? I, this is someone who never, no one ever really talks about, but I met him recently and I had to salute, um, the, uh, unknown MC, Unknown MC, I can't remember what his name was, but he was in a group called Hijack. So he, um, that, that, I think they, they did pretty well. They, they were UK hip hop. That's what people tell people. Anyone like them, Roots Maneuver, Skinny Man, who, who at the time classed themselves as UK hip hop. It was kind of a backpack. I didn't see myself as that kind of thing. I wasn't really into it. I didn't feel like I related to that. Because of the drum and bass influence and the and and that vibe, yeah, I just wasn't into the they, 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 at that time. Like it just, it was more. They felt like they was like a backpacker thing. Like it just wasn't. And that never was actually. You were never like a pure backpacker. Nah, no. I, I like some intelligent, intelligent rap, but I don't know. I just had to be witty. Even like when I was a kid, I didn't even really like New York hip hop like that. I thought it was boring because it wasn't musical enough. I'm guessing, but I love Snoop. And I love Tupac and Bone Thugs and Harmony. And then when I heard Project Pat, 
and all that. I don't know why. That's why, because the beats were just it so be, evil and so the, easy. Right, I mean? the music is what hits you the most. Right, more than yeah. The, more than the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. Not to take anything away from the lyrics, lyrics but... Right, yeah. And then, I mean, when I'm seeing Cameron, and I mean, when Dips, uh, Dipset came out, everyone wanted to be yeah, like... Dipset, yeah, it, you know I mean? And Dipset had a major uh, effect in the UK Crazy. And, and Europe like, in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Cameron's had his, his ups and downs out there, but... but Every, like I wanted to dress like them. I was still doing grime. I wanted to dress like I remember. I came out to New York on the first time. I went to there's one shop in New York, uh, in New York where everyone used to get the those jackets, the jackets with all the badges, the team mm -hmm. badges and all that. Yeah, man, I remember. But as far as hip hop, yeah, unknown MC because he transitioned to Garage UK Garage, and they had a, that that track called um, Good Rhymes. They had Creed, um, unknown MC. Uh, I can't remember who else. There's a, every, anyone who's watching from the UK and I'm talking about it. it was Don't worry, though. No. But he made that transition from being a UK rapper that a lot of people didn't know about to being really influential. That that was one of the biggest um, dunks or garage tunes to come out. Before Soul Solid, before Morphire, that was one of the first, when I was a kid that came on top of the pops. Got it. And he was the first lyrical one. It's only now I've done my... Uh, my research is, and uh, now I'm older and done like look back and realize oh he was one of the original UK hip hop rappers and transcended through UK garage and in, in kind of influenced a lot of us. Yo, listen, um, Dizzy, uh, new music soon. Hopefully, people are waiting. I'm working on the album now, so it's a good time. Yeah, definitely, man. But the, the, I just wanna, I'm still into just experimenting and trying loads of different things a lot of people want me to just yeah make a make a grammar make boy in the corner too make boy in the, and that's all cool but that's not how i made boy in the corner i made boy in the corner by experimenting and just make, and a big part of that was i made beats at that, that, those times i'm really influential on the music side of gram as much as the, the lyrical side because i made I've, I've been making beats from when i was 15 and everything changed a lot of people change their style of making beats. Even, like I said, even people like Wiley or whoever at the time, the way I made beats influenced a lot of people to change how they made their beats and it, and that's resonated through to today. So I'm going to have to get back to that at some right, point. Right. All right, well, listen, we look forward to it. It's a pleasure getting to meet uh, in person. You too, boss. Yeah, uh, oh, one man. of the true OGs, Dizzy Rascal. UK, what up? Um, and don't forget to catch me out there. Um, I'm on with Mr. Jam every couple of weeks. I do my mix on yeah. one extra. We got S Mr. Jam, obviously. So um, when when you get new music, man, hit me. Definitely. Uh, you know what it is, man. Real late, Hot 97.